Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. Called to be an apostle. How do you get called to be an apostle? How do you get chosen to be an apostle? Paul, called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. I think it's interesting because many are called, Jesus said, but few are chosen. I think of those ones that were following Jesus and there was 120 that were very devout, apparently, in following him. And they went where he went, ate what he ate. They participated in what he was doing. Called to be an apostle. You know, I wonder today if there aren't a lot of people out there in the world that are called to be apostles. I wonder if there aren't many people that are called to be prophets and teachers, to be pastors, to be elders. An apostle, I think, sometimes gets confused because a lot of people assume that that's like, you know, you got to be, you know, one of the twelve or that you have to be one of the, um, you know, people that saw Jesus. I think it's more what God calls an apostle than what man interprets it to be. Because what Paul probably meant, and what I'm sure that I know I mean when I use the word apostle is, I'm talking about missionaries. I, I personally think that every apostle is a missionary. And that every missionary is an apostle, that they're sent out as one of the ones sent to proclaim the gospel, but to start churches, to cause people to come together to find salvation, but to know Jesus. I don't really think that apostles are gone. I think they're still here. As a matter of fact, I think that many are called to be an apostle. I think you're called to be an apostle. Seriously. I think when the Lord said, go and make disciples of all nations, how could you be anything less than an apostle unless you become greater than and you be like Jesus, which would be above the 12 apostles, obviously, or the 11. So, I see apostles as missionaries. I don't see them in some capacity that we make them out to be holier or disappeared or gone. Matter of fact, I have a problem when people start telling me that different parts of the Bible don't apply today. I don't understand where they're coming from. I don't really get where they're going. Because you see, when I look at the Bible, I understand that God is speaking to me. I understand that if I have the Word of God in front of me and I have the Spirit of God within me and I have ears to hear what the Spirit of God may say to me, then I'm obviously speaking to and talking to and being directed by God and being led by the Spirit. I'm told that I am a son of God. So if I'm reading that and I understand it correctly, then I must be called an apostle because it's speaking to me today as a Roman. After all, I mean, couldn't you look at the Roman civilization? the Roman Empire, the people that were living in Rome at the time that Jesus was alive, and can't you see yourself in that same way, that same shape and form? I do. I mean, there were lots of people in Rome that had no idea about what was going on in Judea or Samaria or Jerusalem. They had never heard of Jesus. They never understood what he was about or what was going on. Matter of fact, we know that because Luke set out to write an account of all that occurred so that he could tell Theophilus about Jesus. And so I find it interesting that looking at Rome, the Roman Empire, I see the American Empire the same way. Democracy and abuse. Power and abuse. People in the Senate abusing their privileges. Slavery occurring different indulgences happening, different moral decays, 
great coliseums and gladiators fighting. As a matter of fact, I don't really see any difference at all in Rome and America. Um, I do see one difference in the sense that the Caesar was able to take over power, but some people think that the current president is like a Caesar. Well, I, I can't say that. I don't agree. But I understand what they're trying to say about power. And as far as what influence was concerned, I would certainly agree that most people that look at the presidency or look at the current situation in government in America would definitely have a case to be made that it kind of looks like gods. Yeah, they all act like it. Gods of men. So, I really don't see too much difference between what's going on in Rome and what's going on in America. As a matter of fact, I think that fits today. So, because I see the book of Romans or the letter to the Romans by Paul as fitting for today, and I know that the Spirit of God is in me, I'm saying to you today that you are a Roman American, that you are an American, but you are also being written to and being spoken to, and that you, whether you realize this or not, are called to be an apostle, just like Paul was. Now, you may not be and may never fulfill that destiny because you may stay in your little flock or your congregation, or where you're at, or just be a minor player sitting in the pew. But you might rise up to the occasion that God may want for you to do what He says to do. Because Paul didn't set out to become an apostle. Matter of fact, I think Paul set out to just do whatever God wanted him to do. But he was passionate about it. He cared about it. He greatly wanted to do it. He was very much so excited to do it. Are you? Are you excited to be so on fire for the Lord that you could just as easily have been on fire against the Lord? Were you one of those types of personalities that you're really whole hog or nothing and you want all of it or you want none of it? Maybe not. Maybe you're not an apostle, but maybe you could be. Maybe you could look at yourself and say, hey, you know, I'm in my worship leader position, but I'm not really cutting it. I'm in my, you know, kind of like sitting in the pew, what I don't do, I just listen to, you know, every Sunday and Wednesday. But I could be apostle. I uh, don't do the Sunday school, you know, but maybe I could volunteer once in a while, but I don't know. Could I be an apostle? The question is, are you willing? Are you willing? Are you today willing to look at this book and read it and understand that God, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, who knocked Paul off his horse, who could right now talk to you in thunder and lightning, or in a still small voice, in people coming to you, or a donkey speaking through you, or to you, that somewhere, reading, somehow, sometime, right now, God might be saying to you, you're called to be an apostle. What do you think? I think so. I could say for myself, Michael, a servant of Jesus Christ called to be an apostle. Now, I'm not building myself up. I'm just saying I've gone out and I've done missionary work. I do missionary work. I go when God says go. I do what God says do. I try to fulfill all that God wants me to do and sometimes I go beyond it and sometimes I do less. Sometimes I fail. Sometimes I succeed. Paul, called to be an apostle. Hmm. Are you? What do you think? Do you think you could be one? I look at this and I think Paul called a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. The gospel of God. I find that very interesting because, you know, I keep reading these different phrases and I find them very potent with meaning. But I want to focus in on being an apostle because being an apostle means that you would have seen the Lord, you would have heard the Lord, and you would know the Lord. And I can say, yeah, I've seen the Lord. I see him in you at times. I see him in the Word. I see him all over. I see him in creation. I see him all over. Like I said, he that has eyes to see, the Spirit of God can reveal. Would you be willing to 
maybe going to heaven if it meant coming back and being like an apostle? Maybe God is calling you to be an apostle. Maybe God wants to send you out to some place where you've never been. Maybe you should consider well the life you're living and think again about what kind of Roman you are. Paul and a servant of Jesus Christ called to be an apostle separated unto the gospel of God. What do you think an apostle is like? Peter? <laughs> James? John? Alphaeus? Archaeus? Simon? You know, the twelve. What did they do? And then what did they do later? And what did they do afterwards? You know, the church picked an apostle. But Paul says, called to be an apostle. Has God told you something? Has God spoken to you at some point in time and you haven't fulfilled your destiny? Have you somehow taken some left turn or right turn and decided that you didn't want to be that kind of Christian? You didn't want to get too Pentecostal about it. You didn't want to get too charismatic. You didn't want to get all overboard. After all, you have a job, a good job. You have a car. You have a nice car. A nice car. You have a truck. Oh, hey. Now we're trucking. You know, you got the American dream. You're living the Roman way, the Roman idea. Yeah, you know, a citizen. You're an American citizen. You're a Roman citizen. You have justice on your side, just like Paul appealed to the justice of Rome. You know that you have been favored because you have been born in the USA. Born in the USA. But what is God calling you? Is God calling you? What is God calling you to? And what is God calling you for? I know it's a hard decision to make to see yourself as highly successful in the world. And I've been that way. I've been successful when I wanted to be. Didn't mean much when I got there because I realized this ain't much. It's not much there. I've been poor in the world. Didn't mean much either because it was like, well, poor or successful, they seem to be the same. But the one thing that I did see that was different every time that I did it was that as I followed the Lord, as I did what God told me to do, then I found great satisfaction. Because then, just like Paul called to be an apostle, I saw the Lord. I heard the Lord. I get to know the Lord. <laughs> Add that called to be an apostle and when you respond to the call God reveals himself to you imagine going out and having to be so dependent upon God that you know it's terrifying at the time but you begin to experience miraculous things signs and wonders are following you you're beginning to do things that there's no way you would have understood or believed that you ever would have done that before what do you think an apostle is oh pastor oh teacher oh elder deacon preacher Oh, person of interest, person interested. I wonder, what was Paul like? One of the blessings I find in reading the Bible that I find very much true in this scripture portion that we're reading in Romans is that When you take the time to wait on the Lord and think about it, God will breathe life into it and make it fit for your life. Make it fit in some way to challenge you to say, hey, rise up. Come up here and see what I got for you. Take a step up rather than step back. Step up to the plate and act like 
what you really should be. Because I got news for you. You're called to be an apostle. You were chosen by God and he's calling people all over, everywhere to be dependent upon him, to allow him to be their strength, to allow him to be their defense, to allow him to be their, their comforter, to allow him to be their salvation, to allow him to be their God and for we to be his people. But he's called you to be as an apostle. Now your name's not Paul, probably. Maybe you don't think that you're meant to be an apostle. Maybe you think this is exaggerating or taking it one step too far. Are you a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you learned how to serve Jesus? Have you learned how to be the servant of all? Have you culminated your church experience in maturity and now you know that there's something more that maybe you're going to step up to be a pastor? What about a prophet? What about an apostle? Oh, it says that there were some that were evangelists and some that were pastors and some that were teachers and some that were elders and some that were deacons and some that were apostles. How many is some? What's the sum total of a few? Many are called, but few are chosen. If God chooses few, but he's called many, do you think that maybe you too could be one of the chosen? In verse 2 it says, Which he had promised aforetime by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. He had promised aforetime by the Holy Scriptures concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, in verse 2 and 3. But when you think about this, you still go back to 1 and you say, Paul, a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. Not the gospel of Jesus Christ, not the gospel, but the gospel of God, separated by being one of the servants of Jesus and then being called to be an apostle. I looked at it and I said, you know, I don't understand this calling thing, Lord. You know, I don't get what people are telling me all the time. They say that they're called, you know, that I, I got the calling of God, you know, because they grabbed the scripture, you know, and the scripture fit. And, you know, they went out and they did the ministry and they're now into some big mega ministry, you know, and they're done, you know, they're happy. They're, you know, going along motion, you know, and doing their devotion, you know, and they're doing their shtick. But I wonder if they haven't sacrificed sometimes some of the things that they could be doing for some of the things they are doing. In other words, when we say we had received our calling, what if God today wanted to call to you? Could you say that with certainty that you've heard God call you? Because I think of the calling as being, Michael, and I'd go, yes, Lord, thy servant speak, thy servant listeneth as they did in the temple when the young child was sitting there and it was a child that was God speaking to. And he had to ask Eli the prophet, uh, did you call me? No. Three times. About the third time, Eli says, hey, Samuel, I don't know what you're hearing, but you know what? Next time you hear it, just say, speak, Lord, thy servant listeneth. Is that maybe an issue you might have that you can't hear God speak so you don't know what your calling is? You might not know this, but God is speaking all the time, audibly. God is speaking through His Word, demonstratively, by His providence, by His circumstance, by the essence with which the Holy Spirit can give that portion of Scripture fulfillment in your life today by showing and revealing Jesus to you in a personal, intimate way that you know that portion of Scripture, that part of it, that little piece stood out in your life, and that was God speaking. What is your calling? We're told in the Bible to make our calling and our election sure. Are you sure about what your calling is? Paul was. Paul was able to say without any uncertainty that I am Paul. I'm just a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
but I'm called to be an apostle. He doesn't say, later I think he does say I am an apostle, but he just says called to be an apostle. And as such, that means that somebody spoke to Paul and said, look, I want you to be my apostle. I want to know today, when you turn off this video and you walk away and you think about it, well, that was kind of a different kind of study. I want you to ask only one thing, because there's only one real question that I had from the beginning until the end of this study that I wanted to ask you, and I wanted you to learn and to follow through with this portion of Scripture. Has God called you? Seriously. Has God actually physically spoken to you and said, I want you to do this? Because I look at men every day and I deal with them on the internet in every way and a lot of times they'll tell me all kinds of things that they say the Bible said. But what did God say? That's why I always ask them, what did God tell you today? What did God say? Has God spoken to you? No. Then how do you know? Because you read it? And you can pull it out and regurgitate it, make it up when you want to, and choose and lose and pick and choose whatever it is that you want to use that day. I don't know about that one. But when somebody calls me, I hear the phone ring. Pick it up. Yeah, this is Michael, a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh! You're calling me to be an apostle? Cool. Are you serious? Or are you messed up? You see, that really is what the scripture is saying to you today. God is calling you. God has called you. God has chosen you. He's chosen you for salvation, but he's calling you to do something. And if you're not doing something and you're doing nothing, then I question whether you're chosen and I question whether you're listening to what God is saying. Because God is calling and He's calling out to you to do something with what you've been given. The grace with which you have been appropriated to you for salvation will not return void unto the Lord, but it will accomplish its purpose in your life to change you, but also to make you into something more than who you were so that you can become who you are. And if Jesus since he's the son of God, can't be an apostle, I would suggest to you that just about every other believer that is not exactly like Jesus is called to be an apostle. And I would suggest to you that you need to find out what your calling is. If it's a teacher, a teacher. If it's a prophet, a prophet. If it's a minister, a minister. And I don't care what it is, but make your calling and election sure because that's one of the commandments that God said. And you read everywhere in the scripture as we read today in Romans, you... No, Paul said called to be an apostle. And that means not only was he called, but someone else was called. And there are other people that are called apostles. And there are other people called lots of things. I want to know if you'll walk away from this study today and ask God to say, what's my calling? And not be satisfied until you get alone with God. You spend the time today to walk away and say, well, that was a short study or whatever you may want to call this. But... You leave with the thought of doing this. Lord, what's my calling? Lord, are you calling me? What am I called? Am I called to be an apostle? Am I called to be a pastor? Am I called to be a teacher? Am I called to be a Christian? What am I called to be? So, let me leave you with that thought. And I'll probably go take a nap because I think I have a migraine. But what are you called to be? What are you called to do? What are you called to accomplish with your life that maybe, just maybe, you haven't been doing? You are called. You are meant to do what God wants you to do. Go ask Him. Go take the time. Go make the time. Go be realistic about it and go get a word from the Lord or a scripture or a direct communication or some kind of inspiration with which you can say, David, servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, called to be a worship leader. John, servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, called to be a Sunday school teacher. George, servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, 
called to be a janitor. Fred, servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle. Make your calling and election sure. Make your calling sure. Make it so obvious and so overtly demonstrative that you know and you can make that statement, just like Paul did, so that you will go on with life today saying, I am a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I am called to be, and you'll be able to say so. So, my challenge to you is, what are you called to be?